the uneven solar radiation of our planet results on a patch of warm air rising right here at the equator. As this warm, less dense air rises, it spreads north and south. As it reaches higher latitudes, it cools down, it gets more sink and they're more dense and therefore it sinks. This air that sinks then can spread down south or north. Notice that uh, circulation cell has been created over here between zero and 30 degrees of latitude. This is known as the Hadley cell, named after the scientist that described this circulation of warm and cold air between zero and 30 degrees of latitude. Rising of warm, less dense air creates areas of low pressure at the equator. Cool, dense air creates areas of high pressure. At 30 degrees north or south. Areas in, of high and low pressure are also observed at 90 degrees north where the air is sinking, so therefore this is a high pressure area. As the cool, dense air sinks, it spreads south. As it travels south, it warms up, and so it will rise at around 60 degrees of latitude, 60 degrees north of the equator. And therefore, at this latitude, we have another area of low pressure where the air is rising and it will spread north or south. So we see the creation of two other circulation cells the, between 60 and 90. We call that the polar cell between 30 and 60 degrees. We call it the ferro cell also named after the scientists that described this, this, this uh, convection, um, cell that circulates warm and cool air. All right, so the importance of these high and low pressure areas in relationship to the global wind pattern is that winds are generated from these different pressure gradients. So wind will travel from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. So um, you can imagine that the air will then flow from this area of high pressure in the north to this area of low pressure at the equator. However, um, because we are in a rotating, rotating spherical planet, the air cannot travel at a straight path. It will be affected by Coriolis and therefore it will be deflected. Now in the Northern Hemisphere, we learn that Coriolis deflected any, deflects any fluid to the right of its, its movement. So the wind between these two latitudes will be deflected to the right and therefore it will be coming from the northeast. These are the northeast trade winds. Now between 30 and 60 degrees of latitude, we also have a, a, a pressure gradient from high to low pressure. And so air will tend to flow from high to low. But again, Coriolis will deflect that movement to the right. And so the wind comes from the west in this band of latitude. And these are called the westerlies. Then between 90 and 60 degrees, we also have a pressure gradient, high and low pressure. 
and the wind will then be deflected to the right again because of Coriolis and therefore they will be coming from the east so these are called the polar easterlies. Now the same happens in the southern hemisphere, so from high to low, but the deflection here occurs to the left. So the trade winds in the southern hemisphere are coming from the southeast, so they're named the southeast trade winds. Between 30 and 60 degrees, we're also going to have westerlies. So winds will travel from high to low and be deflected to the left of its path. So these are the Southern Hemisphere westerlies. And between 90 and 60 degrees south, we also have a pressure gradient, high pressure at 90, low pressure at 60. That will create winds that will have a bit what that will be affected by Coriolis, and so they will be deflected to the left, so they result as polar easterlies. So these are your global winds and your global wind pattern. So between 0 and 30 degrees, you have the trade winds. Between 30 and 60 degrees, you have the westerlies. Between 60 and 90 degrees, you have the polar easterlies. And they are generated as a result of this pressure gradient that is created by the uneven uh, solar heating of our planet. Another interesting points, point to note is that right at the equator you create this, uh, there is a convergence zone and also an area of um, low pressure, right? And so the air is rising and it, it um, condenses and it creates clouds and heavy precipitation so this area is known as an area a windless can write that down windless and with heavy precipitation and it was referred uh, to by the sailors as um, uh, is currently referred to by sailors as the doldrums so this area of right at the equator, a low, low wind, high precipitation, uh, so the, it, was, it would be uh, difficult to navigate by the wind over here. The ships would be stuck several days in this cloud, uh, rainy area. This is also where you have your rainforest belt, so the most uh, extensive rainforest coverage occurs at the equator. And this is actually, there's a term for this area, and it's called the Intertropical Convergence Zone, or ITCZ. Conversely, right at 30 degrees of latitude, north and south, you have these high pressure areas where the cold air is sinking. And as cold air sinks, it warms up and it uh, creates uh, uh, an area with... Uh, low clouds so this is an area of high uh, clear skies uh, which then generates high evaporation and therefore high salinities in the oceans um, there's also a, this is also an area with very low wind and uh, high salinities and so um, uh, it, it's the dry area so this is also known as the desert belt and during those sailing times um, uh, 
um, the, 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 the ships that would navigate and pass through this latitude would be stuck over here for a few days under clear skies. Um, and so they would uh, uh, have a scarcity of water and they would, in order to preserve um, or save on, on, on water during their travel, they would have to throw their horses that they were transporting uh, up overboard. And so this became known as the horse latitude. Um, so just a couple of interesting facts, the doldrums and the horse latitudes are known by oceanographers and, and their, their navigation, the people that navigate the oceans and as a result of these low pressure and high pressure areas that occur at zero and 30 degrees north.